I am Dr. K. M. Uda from Bankabster Department. In today's topic, we can see what is anemia and some of the different types of anemia. So, when you see anemia, it is a condition in which the blood does not have enough healthy red blood cells. So, blood le vandate, red blood cells vandu kamiya arundu chabdeena, that is called as a anemia. And this is caused due to the lack of red blood cells or dysfunctional red blood cells in the body. This leads to the reduced oxygen flow to the body's organs. And this is very common. There are 10 million cases per year in India. Now we will see hemolytic anemia. Red blood cells have the important mission of carrying oxygen from the lungs to hand and throughout the entire body. The bone marrow is responsible for making these red blood cells. When destruction of the red blood cells outpaces the bone marrow's production of these cells, hemolytic anemia occurs. This hemolytic anemia can be extensive or intrinsic. The extensive hemolytic anemia is it is develops when the spleen traps and destroys healthy red blood cells or also due to an autoimmune reaction occurs. It can also come from the red blood cells destruction due to infection, tumors, autoimmune disorders, medication side effects, leukemia and also due to lymphoma. So coming on for the intrinsic hemolytic anemia, this is developed when the red blood cells produced by the body does not function properly. This condition is often inherited such as in people with sickle cell anemia or thalassemia and these peoples have abnormal hemoglobin. On other times it may be also due to an inherited metabolic abnormality can lead to this condition such as in people with glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency or red blood cell membrane instability such as hereditary cephalocytosis. Any age can develop hemolytic anemia. Next we will see causes of hemolytic anemia. The underlying causes of extensive hemolytic anemia includes enlarged spleen, infectious hepatitis due to some of the virus, typhoid fever, E. coli toxin, leukemia due to lymphoma, due to some of the tumors and also due to autoimmune disorders and they may also occur as a result of taking medicines that is also known as drug induced hemolytic anemia. Example we can say brufen, rifampin, quanitin etc. And this is also caused due to blood transfusion of the wrong blood type and these anemia are temporary and it is curable if the doctor can identify the underlying cause and treat it. When we see the symptoms of hemolytic anemia, the common symptoms of all the anemias includes paleness of the skin, fatigue, a light fever, confusion, light headacheness, dizziness and these peoples will be very weak or inability to do physical activity. These are the common symptoms for all the anemias. So the other common symptoms and signs that are seen in those with the hemolytic anemia includes dark urine, yellowing of the skin, the eyes will be white, heart murmur, increased heart rate, enlarged spleen and there is also enlarged liver.
next we'll see diagnosis of hemolytic anemia so the first diagnosis is physical examination physical examination in the sense வெளியில பார்த்து நம்ம வந்துட்டு அனிமியா இருக்கா இல்லையா அப்படின்னு சொன்னோம் அப்படின்னா தட் இஸ் கால்ட் அஸ் எ பிசிக்கல் எக்ஸாமினேஷன் ஸோ இந்த ஸ்கின் இஸ் பேல் ஆர் எல்லோ கலர் வி கேன் சே தட் அனிமியா இஸ் தேர் ஸோ ஆஃப்டர் தட் வாட் வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு டூ த டாக்டர் வில் பி ப்ரெஸ்ஸிங் ஜென்ட்லி ஆன் டிஃப்ரெண்ட் ஏரியாஸ் ஆஃப் த அப்டோமன் டு செக் ஃபார் த டென்டர்னஸ் விச் குட் இண்டிகேட் அண்ட் என்லார்ஜ் லிவர் ஆர் ஸ்ப்ளின் ஸோ டாக்டர் என்ன பண்ணுவாங்க இப்போ வெளியில் பார்த்ததுக்கப்புறம் ஸ்கின்ல வந்து சேஞ்சஸ் இருக்குது அப்படின்னு தெரிஞ்சிச்சு அப்படின்னா த டாக்டர் என்ன பண்ணுவாங்க அப்படின்னா அப்டோமனில் வந்துட்டு லைட்டாக ப்ரெஸ் பண்ணி பார்ப்பாங்க டு நோ த லிவரும் ஸ்ப்ரீனும் வந்துட்டு என்லாஜ் ஆயிருக்கா அப்படின்றத பார்க்கறது இஃப் இட் இஸ் சஸ்பெக்டட் பிளட் டெஸ்ட் ஹெல்ப்ஸ் டு டயக்னோஸ் ஹீமோலைட்டிக் அனிமியா ஸோ ஆஃப்டர் தட் வாட் ஹி வில் டூ இஸ் ஸோ அனிமியா இருக்கு அப்படின்னா we have to go for certain test we'll go for the first test it is bilirubin so bilirubin measures the level of blood cell hemoglobin that the liver can broken down and processed that is the red blood cell hemoglobin enna agum appadina in the liver adu vandu break agum into bilirubin so by measuring the bilirubin level எவ்வளோ ஆர்பிசிஸ் வந்துட்டு பிரேக் டவுன் ஆயிடுது அப்படின்றத வந்துட்டு வி கேன் ஃபைண்ட் இட் அவுட் ஸோ இந்த பிலோருபின் லெவல் நார்மலை விட அதிகமாக இருந்துச்சு அப்படின்னா ஆர்பிசிஸ் வந்துட்டு அதிகமாக பிரேக் ஆகுது அப்படின்னு டெஸ்ட்மெண்ட் கமிங் ஆன் ஃபார் த நெக்ஸ்ட் இட் இஸ் ஹீமோக்ளோபின் திஸ் இன்டெரக்ட்லி ரெஃப்ளெக்ட்ஸ் த அமௌண்ட் ஆஃப் ஆர்பிசி சர்க்குலேட்டிங் இன் த பாடி பை மெஷரிங் த ஆக்சிஜன் கேரிங் ப்ரோட்டீன் within the red blood cells so the hemoglobin level vandu body la evlo circulate agudhu adoda level enna adoda range enna apdi paathom appadina that is the hemoglobin test coming on for the next test it is liver function this measures the levels of proteins liver enzymes and bilirubin in the blood then coming on for the next one it is reticulocyte count this test measures how many immature red blood cells will be converted into mature red blood cells with a period of time that your body is producing so the reticulo and reticulocyte count abingirathu the immature red blood cells vandute mature red blood cells ஆ கன்வெர்ட் ஆகுது எவ்வளோ டயத்துக்குள்ளார அப்படின்றத நம்ம டெஸ்ட் பண்ணோம் அப்படின்னா தட் இஸ் கால்ட் அஸ் அ ரெட்டிகுலர் சைட் கவுண்ட் ஸோ ஃபார் டாக்டர் திங்ஸ் யோர் கண்டிஷன் மே பி ரிலேட்டட் டு ஒன் இன்டென்சிக் ஹீமோலைட்டிக் அனிமியா தே மே ஹாவ் யோர் பிளட் சாம்பிள் வியூட் அண்டர் யோர் மைக்ரோஸ்கோப் டு எக்ஸமைன் யர் ஷேப் அண்ட் சைஸ் வி கேன் ஆல்சோ கோ ஃபார் யூரின் டெஸ்ட் to look for the presence of red blood cells breakdown so urine test eduthite adile vandute red blood cells evlo irukke breakdown a irukke abindrathu we can find it out and the last test we can do is bone marrow aspiration or else we can say this also as biopsy this test can provide information about how many red blood cells are being made and also their shape next we'll go for treatment for hemolytic anemia the treatment options for hemolytic anemia may include red blood cell transfusion iv ig and the next one is corticosteroids the last one is surgery so we will we'll see all the treatment one by one going on for the first one let us red blood cell transfusion a red blood cell transfusion is given to quickly increase the red blood cells count and to replace destroyed rbc cells with the new ones so the blood transfusion transfusion mulima in the destroy on a blood vandute namba enna panna porom appadina pudhu blood kuduthittu replace panna porom and this is called as a 
red blood cell transfusion coming on for the next one it is iv ig you may be given immunoglobulin intravenously in the hospital to blend the body's immune system if an immune process is leading to hemolytic anemia so the iv ig endrad enna appadina auto immune system thala hemolytic anemia varudhu appadina immunoglobulin na venna panna porom appadina iv la that is intravenous la vandu inject pannite the body oda immune system strong panna porom this is called as iv ig the next one is corticosteroids so in the case of an extensive form of hemolytic anemia of autoimmune origin you may be prescribed corticosteroids they can reduce your immune system activating to help prevent the red blood cells from the destroying other immunosuppressants may be used to achieve the same goal so idu enna appadina auto immune ala red blood cells vandu destroy aagudhu abindra or condition irundhuchu appadina app enna pannalam appadina corticosteroids kuduthittu the immune system va vandu strong pannalam from being destroyed this is called as corticosteroids treatment the next one is surgery in severe cases only a surgery is done when your spleen here it is need to be removed the spleen is where red blood cells are destroyed by removing the spleen we can reduce how fast red blood cells are destroyed this is usually used as an option in cases of immune hemolysis that don't respond to corticosteroids or other immunosuppressants next we'll see iron deficiency anemia there is decreased level of hemoglobin in the rbc so when you take the hemoglobin this hemoglobin is a protein in the rbc that is responsible for carrying oxygen to our tissues this iron deficiency anemia occurs when the body does not have enough of the mineral iron in women of childbearing age the most common cause of iron deficiency anemia is a loss of iron in the blood during heavy menstruation or even during pregnancy a poor diet or certain intestinal disease that affect how the body absorbs iron can also cause iron deficiency anemia symptoms of iron deficiency anemia the symptoms of moderate to severe iron deficiency anemia includes general fatigue weakness the skin is very pale shortness of breath dizziness strange carvings to eat items that are food such as dirt ice or clay a tingling or crawling feeling in the legs tongue swelling or even soreness in the tongue cold hands and feet they are fast or irregular heartbeat brittle nails and headaches coming on for the causes of iron deficiency anemia there are many reasons why a person might become deficient in iron these includes inadequate iron intake that is decrease in the intake of iron or else during pregnancy or blood loss during menstruation and also due to internal bleeding and due to endometriosis and it is also caused due to inability to absorb iron the diagnosis of hemolytic anemia 
the hemolytic anemia can be diagnosed by blood test these includes complete blood cell test that is cbc test a complete blood count is done first and this measures the amount of all components in the blood including red blood cells that is rbcs white blood cells that is wbcs hemoglobin the hematocrit level and the platelets the complete blood cell test provides information about the blood that is helpful in diagnosing iron deficiency anemia this information includes the hematocrit level that is the percent of blood volume that is made up of rbcs the hemoglobin level and the size of the rbcs the ferritin level that is the amount of iron in the blood and the total iron binding capacity health complications of iron deficiency anemia if anemia or iron deficiency is left untreated this can lead to other health problems these includes iron deficiency anemia in women so during pregnancy or during significant menstrual bleeding and uterine fibrosis are all the reasons why women are more likely to experience iron deficiency anemia so women ku vandu iron deficiency anemia edanala varudhu appadina during pregnancy time la vandu iron deficiency varum another one pathinga appadina over bleeding that is the next reason and also due to uterine fibroids so uterine la vandu katti irunduchu adha neer katti nu solvaangale andha mari katti edavad irunduchu appadina appa enna agum appadina the more amount of bleeding will be there and this also leads to iron deficiency anemia in women so this has to be treated the second is rapid or irregular heartbeat during anemic condition the heart has to pump more blood to make up for the low amount of oxygen so inga pathinga appadina during anemic condition la heart beat vandittu rise agum edukku appadina oxygen kammiya irukiradhu vandu compensate pandradhukku the heart beat will rise and this can lead to irregular heart beat in severe cases it can lead to heart failure or an enlarged heart so the mari heart vandu romba fast ah beat aachu appadina or severe cases appa enna agum appadina heart failure is common adu mattum illama in some of the cases enna agum appadina heart vandu enlarge aayidum and coming on for the next complication it is pregnancy complication in severe cases of iron deficiency a child may be born prematurely so or iron deficiency anemia irunduchu appadina the porakra kolanda vandittu premature munadiye vandittu porandrom or with the low birth weight most pregnant women take iron supplements as part of their prenatal care to prevent this from happening so the baby vandute underweight a irukum idha vandu compensate pandradhukku enna pannuvaanga appadina the pregnant a irukra lady will take a iron tablet and then coming on for the next one it is delayed growth in infants and children the infants and children who are severely deficient in iron may experience delayed growth and development they may also be prone to infections treatment for iron deficiency anemia so the very good treatment for this is iron supplements iron supplements abdina iron tablets vandu we can give to reduce anemia the second one is diet so diet vandu 
which is rich in iron content can be given and additionally the vitamin c helps the body to reabsorb iron the intestine la vandute iron edu absorb pannu appadina the reabsorption is done by vitamin c so or food la vandute rich content of iron mattum illa that also should have vitamin c in it then treating the underlying cause of bleeding in more severe cases a blood transfusion can replace iron and blood loss quickly so and iron content vand replace pannavom blood loss vand replace pandrathukku nam enna pannalam appadina we can go for blood transfusion we'll see how it is prevented when it is caused by inadequate iron intake iron deficiency anemia can be prevented by eating a diet which is high in iron rich foods and vitamin c the next anemia is aplastic anemia when the body stops producing enough red blood cells the condition leaves you fatig and more prone to infection and uncontrolled bleeding this is called as aplastic anemia so body vandute enough red blood cells vandu produce pannama irundhuchu appadina and the peoples vandute easily they will be infected and even vandute uncontrolled bleeding irukum indha maari irundhuchu appadina that is called as aplastic anemia and it is a rare and serious condition this aplastic anemia can develop at any age the aplastic anemia endrathu or serious ana or condition idu endha age group ku enalum varala and this can occur suddenly or it may come on slowly and worsen over the time the severity may be mild or even severe the treatment for aplastic anemia might include medications blood transfusions or a stem cell transplant it is also known as a bone marrow transplant signs and symptoms of aplastic anemia when aplastic anemia is present the signs and symptoms can include fatigue shortness of breath rapid or irregular heartbeat pale skin frequent or prolonged infections unexplained or easy bruising nose bleeds and bleeding gums prolonged bleeding from cuts skin rash dizziness headache fever and aplastic anemia can be short lived or it can become chronic it can be severe and even it is fatal we'll see the causes of aplastic anemia the stem cells and the bone marrow produce blood cells in aplastic anemia the stem cells are damaged as a result the bone marrow is either empty that is aplastic or contains few blood cells that is called as a hypoplastic so the bone marrow la irukra stem cells tha enna pannu appadina blood cells vandu produce pannu the aplastic anemia la pathinga appadina stem cells ella damage a irukum adanal the bone marrow vandu onnu either empty a irukum that is called as a aplastic appadi illa appadina konjamana blood cells irukum that is called as a hypoplastic the most common cause of aplastic anemia is from the immune system attacking the stem cells in the bone marrow so the bone marrow la irukra stem cells vandute immune system and attack panuchu appadina that also leads to aplastic anemia and there are also other factors that can injure bone marrow and affect the bone cell production includes radiation and chemotherapy treatments exposure to toxic chemicals use of certain drugs autoimmune disorders viral infection pregnancy 
and also due to uncommon factors. Prevention and diagnosis for aplastic anemia. So going on for the prevention, there is no prevention for most cases of aplastic anemia. So to prevent that, it is can be done by avoiding exposure to insecticides, herbicides, organic solvents, paint removers and other toxic chemicals which might lower the risk of the disease. So going on for the diagnosis, this anemia can be diagnosed by taking the blood test and by using bone marrow biopsy. Treatment for aplastic anemia. The treatments for aplastic anemia which will depend on the severity of your condition and your age might include observation, blood transfusions, medication or bone marrow transplantation. Severe aplastic anemia in which the body cell counts are extremely low is life threatening and requires immediate hospitalization. The treatment for this includes blood transfusion by introducing platelets and these platelets helps to prevent excessive bleeding, stem cell transplant by immunosuppressants, by giving antibiotics and antivirals and by bone marrow stimulants. In this topic, we have seen what is anemia, what is hemolytic anemia, iron deficiency anemia and aplastemia, its causes, its symptoms, diagnosis and treatment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.